I'm gonna show you all the brand new updates in Adobe Illustrator 2025. Let's jump into it. So the first one, we've got objects on a path. So I've got all these icons, they're 3D icons. You can use any icons or objects. What you gotta do is select the objects. On the left-hand side, you can see the little tool. It's got like a curve of two bars. You wanna click that and then find your path and just left click on that path and it'll add all the objects onto that path, just like that. And then you can literally just move the little bar, the little circle bar, and it'll actually change the spacing between each object, which is really cool. It's very smooth as well. You can actually swap positions as well with the objects. So maybe you want to move these objects around. Maybe you want this one at the back, whatever it is. You just drag it. And then what else you can do? You can also rotate all of them. So if I grab this little button at the bottom, I can left click and spin everything, which is super cool. And then also, if you want to have some more customizability on the angles, you can go to the properties panel and go objects on a path options. You can change the pivot. As you can see, so it will move based on the location of the pivot on the uh, on the line, as you can see. And then you can change the angle to whatever you want. So maybe I want 180. You can see now everything is upside down and I can go maybe minus. And that's how you use objects on a path. Next up, we got generate patterns. To get the window, you wanna go to window and then click on generate patterns. It will say beta next to it. And you'll get this box pop up. Now I'm gonna select any part of this clothing. It's just a vector. Uh, illustration we got here. I want to select the jumper and I'm going to type in whatever I want. We can say, you know, um, apples with leaves and I'm going to click press enter and I'll start to generate a pattern on that object. So her hoodie should get a pattern, which is cool. And one of the best things as well with this is that it will add that pattern to your swatches panel so you can reuse it on other objects. You can also use it on a stroke as well. So once it's loaded, you can see we get three options. I can left click on the different options on the side, which is super cool. You can also change the color. So if I left click on the palette, we can change it to vibrant, pastel, cool, black and white, whatever you want. So maybe I want a vibrant color. You can define the number of colors. So maybe you just want two dual tone colors. You can also use specific colors as well. So we can use, you know, any of these ones here. Um, maybe we want the purple as well. We'll try that. And then if you click generate again, it will update that with some more variations. And now you can see it's given us some more options with those two colors we selected, as we can see, which is pretty cool. You can also go to the effects. You can change the geometric or doodle. So if you want to play around with that, and you've also got some settings as well. If you want high density, we can bump that up. And then we can always change the prompt. We can have apples with leaves and I don't know, we'll say ants or something. Cool. And then we go, we've got, we've got to upgrade one. It's added some ants and it's just changed it up. So then you can see all the patterns are on the right side in the swatches panel. Super cool. Next, we've got the mock-up tool. It's currently out of beta and they've refined it. So I've got this logo here. I'm gonna bring it over to my bottle. I'm gonna select them both. And then what we want to do, we wanna to go to window and then go down to mock-up. And then you can see if you've got the contextual taskbar, I'll say create mock-up. So if we just select them two, you can see create mock-up. And then we go, we can actually move the icon or logo anywhere on the product and it works pretty good. It bends exactly to the shape, which is awesome. And you can also, you know, stretch it. We can scale it down as well. And then you can also change the uh, opacity or the blending modes, as you can see there. And so we have full control. So you can create really cool mockups and you can click release as well and we'll get rid of that. Super cool. Next, we've got the artboard tool. So what I'm gonna do, I've got this artwork here. I'm gonna press Shift O and select my artboard. Now you can see this little icon at the top left, you can see if we click that and scale the artboard now, it will scale the um, artwork with it. So you can see I'm scaling it and the tomato got bigger. If we don't have that selected and I just turn it off and I scale the artboard down, you can see now the artwork just stayed the same, but the artboards shrunk. So it's really good if maybe you're changing up a design and you're changing it to like different sizes for social media, that's a good tool to make sure that you're sizing correctly. Next, we've got generate fill. So I've got a shape here. I'm going to select it. You want to make sure that your contextual taskbar is on. You can go to window and select contextual taskbar. I'm going to select my shape and you can see gen shape fill beta. You can also generate vectors, but you want to say generate shape. And we can say in this um, geometric circles color for something. You can see we can say in of these red and green tones and we click generate. And you can see what it generated. It generated some cool flower effect with this, like this generated, you can see it's just all geometric shapes. And then you can also change up the generation. We can say, we can just select one of the pre uh, <laughs> text prompts it gave us. And usually the first prompt is not the best. So you want to keep iterating and the next few ones will get a bit better. Boom. Cool. Now that looks a lot better. looks more fun. Look at that. Very cool. Very cool. It's still got some of those greens in there. 
So that was pretty cool. So it's easy to just generate quick shapes inside of a shape. So next we got this tool that allows you to edit any shape. So I've got this star effect and I'm gonna go to my contextual taskbar and you see the little star, I'm gonna select that. It allows us to manipulate the uh, amount of sides and also the radius and the curve. So you can see side count, I can increase that. It's gonna bump it up. I can also <clears throat> move these as well. It's gonna increase and decrease the points by dragging the circle there. I can also scale it in and it will invert itself as you can see, very cool. And you can also, you know, do the corner radius all in one box, as you can see. And you can see things will get round, we can play around. You can use your mouse as well. So you're not limited to this little box, um, but you can play around with that. It's pretty straightforward. You can just edit shapes very easily. Next, we've got to upgrade to the image trace tool. So I'm gonna select this whale here. We got <laughs> a killer whale. I'm gonna se select image trace here and we wanna change the tracing result. We actually wanna to go to image trace menu and we're going to select high fidelity photo and you can see if i zoom in it didn't do the gradients well it actually messed it up it's got some banding it's got some artifacting with the shapes there it's not doing the gradients well so what i'm going to do now is go down to the image trace uh window and you can see now we've actually got the option to select gradients i'm going to select that just pay attention to the gradients and see how it started to smooth things out it didn't do some areas but majority of the middle section did pretty well as you can see you can see this smooth bar i'm going to max it out and so if you saw that, you'll notice a big difference there. It smoothed out the gradients, less banding, less artifacting, makes it a lot better. And then we've got some other options here. You can play around with that, but it's pretty straightforward. Now, next I'm gonna show you Project Neo and how you can use it in Adobe Illustrator. Project Neo is basically a new version of Adobe Dimension, but it's a bit better. Um, you can vectorize things, you can change the styles very easily and stuff like that. So what we're gonna actually do with this, we can actually download and download it as a PNG, JPEG or an SVG. So I'm gonna click download, we can customize the size. So maybe you wanna go, 1500 by 1500 just to make it like a square uh download cool and then we can do it as svg or a png if i go download real quick i'm gonna go back to illustrator i'm gonna drag my object in so we now we've got the you can see you've got the background i can delete the background if i want as you can see and now we can fully use this 3d it, and now it's all vectorized as you can see and i can go in here and like start changing the colors very easily boom as you can see Cool. So very easily we can start to edit and you know adjust things and do whatever just by that. Just by in Project Neo you can make 3D objects, save as SVG and just bring it into Illustrator and then you have full control. So super, super cool. So those are all the updates. Hope you enjoyed them. If you do want to learn some more tricks and tips in Adobe Illustrator, I actually have a masterclass you can get on Skillshare or get on my website. I'll put a link in the description below. If you want to watch some more tutorials on Illustrator, check this one right here.